So it even goes through firewalls. Make the shake API public, so you can use shaking. Uh, we've made data detectors and core data we've added. An in-game voice. We've even, if you have a, a game that plays over Wi-Fi, we have built-in voice chat APIs you can use to add voice into your game. So again, just a few of the over 1,000 APIs we're adding for developers. This is a big update for the iPhone SDK. Now, a couple weeks ago, we called up a few developers and asked them to come in and get a sneak peek at the iPhone 3.0 SDK and see what they could do in only two weeks. And what they've done has just blown me away. So I'd like to bring them up here, a few of them, to show you and tell you what they've accomplished with iPhone 3.0. We have some phones here that are tethered, so they can have their demos on it, all connected up to the screen. And they'll go ahead and give you some demos. Let's start with Mebo. With over 45 million people sending over 5 billion messages a month, Mebo is one of the fastest growing social websites out there. And now they're moving it native on the iPhone. To talk you through their experiences, I'd like to invite up Seth Sternberg. Seth? Hello there. My name is Seth Sternberg, and I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Mebo, which is the web's real-time communication platform. And I'm here with Paul Soden, one of our developers. So we're really excited that Apple invited us here today because, as Scott said, we're announcing that for the first time, Mebo's developed a native iPhone application. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the application. Now, Mebo's goal is to let our users communicate live with their friends across the web and at Mebo.com, regardless of which IM network that they may be on. And today, we're doing that for 45 million unique users worldwide on a monthly basis. So if we take a look at the application that we've built here, we've got friends from traditional IM networks like AOL and MSN, friends from new IM networks like Facebook and MySpace, and also friends from IM networks that Mebo powers through our new property called Community IM, where we're embedded both on our partner sites and over at Mebo.com, such as News Corp's gaming site, IGN, and the social network, My Yearbook. So why don't we go ahead and tap on Paul's name there. And it looks like he wants to catch a movie sometime. So let's go ahead and say, sure, Watchmen. <laughs> awesome. Now, of course, you may be wondering, why didn't Mebo wait until now to build a native iPhone application? And as you can see, I just got a push notification from my girlfriend, and she's asking if I can grab a bit of milk on the way home. So we're going to answer that to keep me out of trouble. Mebo felt that push notifications was the last bit of technology in the iPhone that we needed to build a truly fantastic experience for the users natively. We didn't want to drain their battery life, and we wanted a really simple way for them to be able to quit out of the application and easily get back in when it made sense. So why don't we go ahead and respond to Monica Say, yes, dear. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, we also wanted to put just a little bit of extra spice in our application on the iPhone as well. And so you can see down at the bottom, I've got social feeds. And it looks like I've got a new notification there. So let's go ahead and click on that. So our partners in Community IM can let users like on Flickster know that a friend of mine on Flickster rated a movie. Or over on I Beat You, it looks like Elaine added me as a friend. Great. So we're really excited about the application that we're bringing natively to the iPhone. Thank you guys very much. The goal was to build something that was just completely seamless between Mebo's properties on the web and Mebo on the iPhone. And we think we've created something very special. Take care. As you can see, Mebo is a perfect candidate for push notifications. And in fact, it's the reason they can bring it to the iPhone now with iPhone 3.0. Next, EA, Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts is one of the largest game developers in the world. And they already have 10 great games on the App Store, including Tetris, Spore, SimCity, and Monopoly. To uh, tell you what their experiences have been like with the iPhone 
3.0 SDK, I'd like to bring up Travis Boatman. Travis? Travis. Hey, everybody. So um, it's really excited to be here again. The last time John and I were here on stage was about a year ago when we actually announced Spore um, for the original SDK launch. And uh, after the SDK launch, we've seen a tremendous explosion of usage and innovation in the mobile game space. So we're really excited to be back here again today to talk about the 3.0 version. Now, the 3.0 version is bringing a lot of new interesting features, and we wanted to have a game that would demonstrate the use of some of these features. And the game we have chosen is a game that sold over 100 million consumers, or 100 million units worldwide. And that game is, of course, The Sims. Now you can see here on The Sims, we've got a character who's waving at us. He's probably as comfortable as I am here on stage, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll call him Scott. Um, so let's go ahead and bring Scott into the game. Um, now we're going to be, uh, we're only showing you one small room of The Sims, Sims world here, just uh, Scott's house. Um, so we're seeing Scott's doing a tour of the house. It's all done beautifully in 3D. Um, and again, this is only done with a couple weeks of work here on site. Um, one of the interesting features about this, you'll see in the lower left-hand corner, um, Scott's got a whole bunch of simoleons. And simoleons are sort of in-game monetary units that The Sims use. Um, let's go spend some of his, his simoleons to upgrade his house and customize a little bit here. Um, you'll see that there's a lot of different features we can choose to customize his house, whether they're things like stereos or bookcases or you know, special bathroom utilities. Um, but you'll notice at the very top of the screen, let's scroll back to the top, you see there's a red icon that indicates new features available, right? So these are new features that are being populated over our servers, over the network. Let's go pick that Hi-Fi stereo pack, because that looks kind of like something fun we might want to play with. Now here you see the indicator for in-app commerce, so we're going to go ahead and purchase that, that item. Um, and this item that we're purchasing and we're going to bring into the game isn't just cosmetic. It actually has gameplay value and modifies the features of the game. So let's go ahead and bring that in and put it probably in the living room. Um, so we showed you a little bit of in-app commerce. The second thing we're going to show you is the media access. So this particular stereo, yeah, he can, Scott likes it. Um, so you can see uh, we're going to use, we're using in-app commerce, now we're going to use the media center. So go ahead and tap the stereo and we're going to play music directly off the iPhone or the iPod Touch. So he seems to like that. And if you don't like that music, you can tap it again and go to the next song. That seems pretty good. So we're hoping that if our sims like it this much, so will our consumers. And that's an example of what you can do with the SDK 3.0 um, for iPhone. And uh, that's The Sims 3, and we're Electronic Arts. Thanks, everybody. I don't dance like Elaine. Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that they're, they're accessing the built-in iPod music library right from the application now, available now in iPhone 3.0. Next up is Oracle. Oracle is the largest business software company in the world. And they're already serving both their and our joint enterprise customers with five applications on the App Store. To talk you through their experiences with the iPhone 3.0 SDK, I'd like to bring up Hody Crouch. Hody? At Oracle, we've had tremendous success with the iPhone. In a very short period of time, we brought out a total of five new iPhone apps, and the response has been truly amazing. So we jumped at the chance to come, come here to Cupertino and enhance some of our apps with the new features of the iPhone 3.0 SDK. Let's imagine that Chris here is a vice president of manufacturing for a toy company. He's on his way to meet with a, a new supplier, when as you see here, he's gotten an alert on his iPhone. So by tapping the View button here on his uh, iPhone, Oracle Business Indicators is automatically launched. The app establishes a secure connection back to the enterprise and retrieves more details about the alert. It looks like we've got a critical problem on our teddy bear production 